Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're continuing on um, creating material shaders for our bottle. And in the last uh, couple of videos, we've gone through the process of creating this clear plastic. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to the label and the cap. And these are gonna be a lot more simple than the uh, than the plastic bottle was. Uh, so I've got my Hypershape shade panel open over here, which I can access via the little um, preset button on the left of the interface. And you can see down here at the moment, I've still got my um, my plastic bottle shader network uh, displayed. So what I want to do is clear this graph so I can um, use it potentially for maybe the cap and the label. So to clear the bottom um, work area, we can come up to this little eraser button here that's called clear graph. Now you can also go into graph, um, the graph menu and select clear graph from here as well. And it just empties that out. All right, so we want a new material, um, and uh, I'm going to do the, the process slightly different. I'm going to start off by creating the material over here uh, in the Hypershade, and then what I'm going to do is apply it onto the object afterwards. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, from the little uh, Create bar just here, I'm going to select another Blend material, all right, and you can see when you click on that, it adds it here and then also adds it in the work area so that you can start to make uh, node connections to it. Um, first thing I want to do is in the attribute editor, I want to rename this and I'm going to call this uh, label shader like that. Don't forget to press enter uh, when you type something in so that it actually locks in. You can see down here now um, it's renamed it. Now, you can also right click on these nodes and hit rename and then just type them in this way as well. But I tend to find it's a bit easier to just type them in in the, uh, the attribute editor. Okay, so um, in the same way we did with the plastic, there's a few settings I want to change uh, in the, the numbers before I actually start adding pictures in. So uh, down here in the uh, specular shading area, uh, the first couple of settings, eccentricity and specular roll-off, I'm going to leave those as they are for now. Um, you can kind of play around with those yourself um, to get differing results. Basically, these control the little highlight that you can see here. Um, so the eccentricity, if you dial that down, it gives you a much sharper highlight, which is smaller. The specular roll-off is kind of the brightness level um, of that. Uh, I'm going to kind of just leave them roughly at default. So it was sort of 0.3 and 0.7. You can leave those on. All right. Um, the specular color, you can kind of leave that as it is for the time being as well. Um, this also sort of works like an on off. So basically, if you've got it set low, you can see there you get much less of a, um, you get more of a rubbery kind of look where it's only just very, very low shine on it. And if you crank it up, obviously, you're going to get these really super bright highlights. But that's more like a, almost like a metal kind of steel uh, look. So we don't want to go quite that high. So just leave it roughly where it was, you know, just in the middle. Now, the reflectivity value, I don't want this, this plastic label to be really super reflective. So I'm going to dial this value down. And I want to put it down to about 0.04 or so, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, something like that. So we've got um, a material that's a little bit shiny, but it's not very reflective. So now what I want to do is I want to add in my um, label. Okay, so I'm going to go up to color and I'm going to click the input button and I want to select file and we're going to load in the picture we made in Photoshop. So click that and then next to image name, I want to click the uh, folder and then select my bottle color uh, picture just here. Now note that I'm loading the Targa file in, the .tga. I'm not loading in any of the PSDs, okay? Um, the reason for that is by default, um, when I'm using the mental ray renderer, which is what I'm gonna be using later on, um, the PSDs don't um, render uh, properly um, out of it by default. Um, so we're just going to be using these um, other file formats. Okay, so you can see there that um, it's loaded my uh, label in that I created last time, uh, but it's not showing up 
on the label itself. So now what I need to do is connect my material to my object. So I can click on the label down here and then in the hypershade list, I can right click on the label shader and go to assign material to selection. And that'll load the label on. And then you can kind of have a, a look at it. So that's what it's looking like now. So that's it, as far as the label goes, that's pretty much it. There's not really anything else you would need to do. Um, now, technically, if you wanted, you could actually add in um, the same reflection image uh, setup that we used for the, the bottle. Um, if we take a look down here, if you do your reflected color, uh, you could load in an environment ball uh, node, and then you could load in the exact same um, background image if you wanted to. Okay, you don't have to, but um, because it has a little bit of reflection, technically it should reflect the same environment as the rest of the object. So if you want to, you can do that. Okay, um, and it's the same process as, as I said, it's the exact same process we did with the plastic shader, um, just for the reflected color, which was the last thing we did. So you just click here, select environment ball out of the list, and then you load an image into the environment ball. Um, I'm not gonna do that here though. Um, we covered that in the last video. So um, that's an optional thing that you can try out if you want. Okay, um, so that's basically it for the label. All right, so we've got that label functioning. Now I wanna move on to the cap. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do uh, once again is I'm gonna create another shader uh, or another material, I should say, and we're gonna create another blin. Okay, now I'm using a blin because it's got ref uh, reflection on it and it's also got like a specular highlight, it's shiny. So I can make metal and plastic and things like that out of that material. Um, you could also potentially use a fong or a fong e as well. Um, either of those three shaders would be suitable. Um, but I'm just sticking with a blin to try and keep all of the, the settings um, sort of uh, recognizable to you guys. Okay, um, so I've got blin3. I'm going to rename that and I'm going to call it cap shader. Don't forget to press enter when you type that name in. All right, so um, the uh, first thing that uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to load in my color map. Okay. Um, so at the top of the uh, common material attributes here for the shader, next to color, I'm going to click on the input and I'm going to select file and then I'm going to load in my color map again. Okay. So remember that we created color for all of the different areas on the one image. So it's this bottle color picture again. It's the exact same one we've just used for the label. Okay. Now, obviously, once again, it's not connected to the object at the moment, okay? It still has this Lambert 2 checkerboard on it. Um, so we're gonna have to sh uh, connect that over in a second. Uh, so now I just wanna get back to the main settings for the cap. So what I need to do is click on the um, little uh, uh, kind of input button just here, or output button, I should say. And that'll take me back to my shader settings. So now what I wanna do is go down and um, connect my bump map, okay? In the same way we did with the bottle. So I click here on the bump mapping input and I wanna select a file. And once again, we need to choose whether or not we wanna use um, a bump map, in which case we leave everything as it is and we just press the input here for bump value. Or if you wanna use a normal map, you can change the use as value to tangent space normals and then press the input. So either way, if you've done your normals, um, just make sure you set it to tangent space. Okay, um, so the uh, the next thing we wanna do is load in the um, normal map for the bottle. So uh, we'll just go image, na uh, Im image name, click the little folder, and you wanna either select your bump map or your normal map, depending on which one you wanna use. Um, I'm using normals for this example. Um, so I'm just going to stick with the normal map. Um, so then I'll just click the um, 
uh, the input again. So this has gone back one step, okay? So it's back to the, the actual bump node. Um, and just as a reminder, you can increase the value of your bump um, effect by changing this number here. Uh, what I'm going to do very quickly is um, I'm going to load the um, shader onto the object. So um, what I'll do uh, is just drag, middle mouse drag the shader onto the cap. And you can see there that bump effect that we're getting. So there's there's the ridges from the, the normal map or the bump map. Let's drag it onto here as well. Okay, and I just want to kind of show you guys this a little bit. Um, I want to see if we can actually see it occurring in the viewport. So if I take the bump depth and I drop it, you can see that it's actually adjusting the amount of bump that I get. And if I go backwards into a negative number, it actually looks like it's pushing in. Now you don't want to go too far like this with it. It, it kind of makes it pixelate. So you just want to keep it pretty subtle. I probably wouldn't go over a value of maybe probably like one would be about the maximum or minus one, depending on which way you want the bump to occur. Um, I'm actually going to set mine to minus one like this, but you can have it set to, um, to one, uh, a value of positive one as well, if you like. Okay. And you can see there we've got that little logo appearing on the top from the color map. So we've got a combination of color being applied by one image and um, surface detail being applied by another image, all in the one material. So it makes our um, model look a little bit more uh, regular. Uh, now, if I take this object and I just press three on the keyboard, it'll smooth it out. And then when I deselect, you can see there that looks like a lot more realistic now. Okay, so that's with the smoothing. And when we render this, we'll, we'll smooth it off and um, have it nice and smooth. Uh, I've got it all blocky here at the moment. I just selected everything and just pressed one on the keyboard. Um, I've got everything kind of blocky at the moment um, just so that my computer runs faster. Okay, um, so as far as the, um, the settings, the only other thing we need to do is just change the reflectivity value. And I want to drop that down to about 0.9, give or take. 0.9. Uh, once again, the eccentricity, the specular roll-off, those can kind of stay as they are. Specular color can stay as it is. Um, and once again, if you want, you can actually load those reflection, uh, that um, uh, environment ball and the background image into reflected color if you want. Okay, um, You probably won't see it as much because the um, oops, now that reflectivity value is way too high. It actually should be 0.09, not 0.9, I've just noticed. Um, so yeah, because the, the reflection is so low on these, uh, the label and the cap, you're not going to really see much of a reflection even if you load the, the image in. So um, I've not really bothered with that, but um, you know, you can try it out. You might like the look of it. Okay, uh, so as far as the, the texturing, that's pretty much it. There's not really much else that we um, that we need to do with this. Um, it's pretty much finished. So uh, really all I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to kind of clean up the scene a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to switch back to um, the regular single perspective mode because I don't need the um, hyper shade now anymore. So I'll just turn that off. And I'm just going to select all the objects like this. And I'm going to go up to um, Edit, Delete by Type, History, just to make sure there's no history on those objects anymore. Um, I might also delete the, uh, or sorry, freeze the transformations. You might find that you know one or two of your objects might have some num uh, random numbers in here. So I'm just going to select the whole lot and go Modify, Freeze Transformations. Um, now that potentially might leave an input. If there were transformations anywhere, if there were any random numbers here, you might find that there ends up a, a, a free transform input. So you can just delete the history again if that's the case. And you'll know there is if you select each object one by one and there it says freeze transformations down here. Um, that'll mean that there was actually something that it fixed. Okay, um, mine's okay, so I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so the only other thing that I wanna do is just smooth the model off. So just select everything and press three and that'll create a smooth version of the uh, of the object. 
Um, I'll do a, just a very quick test render, just so I can we can kind of um, see what it was, uh, what it's looking like now. Um, and then in the next stage, basically we're going to finalize the project. We're going to add some lights, and we're going to change some render settings, and basically look at um, exporting a final image of our bottle. Um, so I'll just uh, pause this and uh, do a quick render. Um, I'll open up my render panel here so we can do a comparison with the previous renders. And I'm just setting my um, my test resolution back to full size so we can actually get a full size picture this time. Uh, so I'll just render this and uh, we will do a comparison in a second. Okay, there's the um, there's the render that I've just done. Um, now this is a really basic render. There's no lighting or anything, so it's not really looking as nice as it will later on. Uh, you can see down here at the moment the current render time. It took 34 seconds to render that. Now our final render time potentially could be anywhere up to maybe half an hour to to generate a picture, and that's because we'll be adding in a lot of lights and shadows and and all of that kind of thing and making it look a lot more high quality. Um, but you can see, you know, more or less it's sort of coming along. It's starting to look the way that we want it. Uh, you know, we've got the, the uh, bump detail in up here, uh, which is working quite nicely. You know, we've got the label working properly. You'll notice that the label is actually double-sided. Um, so we can actually see sort of the, the label through the back of the bottle there. Uh, you can see we've, we, we can clearly see the bump um, uh, detail on the bottle. So we're getting this kind of textured plastic look. Um, so, so everything's working out quite nicely. Um, so, uh, I think it'll, it'll probably work out quite well, um, in the final render. So I'm just going to turn this off now. Um, and the only thing we need to do is save the file. So, uh, I'm just going to just turn all of that off. I'll go to, um, what I might do is actually switch the renderer back to default. Um, and then we'll just go file, save scene as. And um, this time what I'm going to do is call this, um, obviously, obviously change the number on it, and I'm just going to um, maybe put in just final um, model, something like that. So I know that this is the completely textured version of the model. All right, and then I just press save and continue. Okay, so uh, that's it. Um, in the next video, uh, we will basically start the final uh, stage of our production and we'll um, basically be setting up uh, lights and render settings and um, hopefully we can uh, get the final render basically uh, underway uh, in the next video. So um, I'll leave this one here and I'll see you then.